hello everyone i just thought i would pop by and do a little video just to give you a little bit more inspiration but this time i would do it with an older set an older flower set that i've got now i need a birthday card for my sister-in-law so i thought why not do a video at the same time I don't actually know where I'm going. This is just an off the cuff demo. But to be honest, I wanted a little break. I'm actually spending a few days reorganising my craft room and talk about long winded. It, you know what it's like. You start something and it takes ages to get sorted. And we're still working on these shelves that my husband's been sorting. We think we found a place to put the shelves. But of course, you find the place to put the shelves and then you have to reorganise your whole craft room, which is what I'm doing just for three small shelves. I'm reorganising my whole craft room. But there you go. So I thought I'd take a little break and create a little project with one of my older stamp sets because sometimes it's nice to revisit the older stamp sets and not just think about new all the time. And sometimes these older stamp sets, some people haven't seen them, so it's nice to revisit them. So I'm creating a card for my sister-in-law and I thought I'd use Eclectic Stems, stamp set 199. And I thought I'd use this Echinacea type flower, this, this cone type flower. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple background, nothing too complicated, quite simple. And what I'm going to do is I'm using the Dina Wakely acrylic paints and this one is lemon. So I'm just adding some of that lemon paint to my cut and dry foam and then I'm just going to drag down the colour. So just a nice easy background. And then I'm going to go to my next colour which is tangerine. You think I should know these colours off by art by now because I use them that frequently. I should know them off by art. So I'm now using tangerine and I'm just going to use that colour next to it. Now these colours work so well together, I just love them. And then I'm going to use ruby and they blend beautifully together, the colours do, I really love them. Now the ruby is quite a, an intense colour so I don't want to add too much of that colour. And what you can do is you can go back and go over your colours because what that will do is blend the colours a little more. So it's sort of like one of those, um, you know when you go for paint colours in the DIY shops and you sort of do a, a sample of the colours, it's like doing a sampler really and that's all I'm going to do. That creates me a nice simple background. We'll just put the lids on the paints just to move those out of the way. And that gives me a nice, simple backdrop initially. And now I'm going to give that a little bit of a dry. So I just need to put plug this in to give it a little bit of a dry. So we're just going to plug this in. You can tell it's off the cuff because I didn't plug my heat tool in. So I told you it was off the cuff, Tracy style uh, video. So that just means that that's nice and dry. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some background stamping. I'm just wondering whether to stamp my flower first because it wouldn't matter if it was masked off because no, we'll stamp the background first. This is what happens when you're off the cuff and you're just going with the flow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, now I've got archival links here, but I'm just wondering whether the Distress Oxide would be better. No, we'll go with these colours. We'll go with these colours. So I'm going with Archival Ink Saffron. So this is a saffron colour. So we'll go with this colour. Looks quite dark on my uh, stamp set. So we're going with Saffron and then we're going with Vermilion. So I'm just going to add a touch of the Vermilion to the stamp set. Now, you don't have to go for a perfect impression. That's why I'm using it without the acrylic block, because it just gives me a more random feel. And I want to keep some freshness about this project. I want to keep it nice and fresh. I don't want to overpower it with lots of colour. I like layers, but I want to keep the freshness. Can you see there? That is so, it's still got quite a bit of the black on from my previous inks. 
so I think the black is more dominant but that's absolutely fine no problem at all I can see a little bit of the red here so that's absolutely fine so what I can do now is I can take my flower stamp and I'm going to stamp this sort of off the center I do like things off the center and not bang on the center so it's just one of those things you know when you there's something that you like doing or that it's a tracyism I think that is one of my things. I just like stamping off the centre. There are always occasions where you want something central, but I'm going for something that's that's not quite central. And I'm just going to turn my paper, my card on the side, just because it makes it a little bit easier to stamp with. So I'm just going to place it, I think, there like so. Yes, we'll place it there. So I'm just going to place that there. And I'm using the All and Create acrylic blocks, which means I can lift those acrylic blocks just to get any central area of the stamp that I might, that I might miss. So I'm just inking that. And if you can hear a little bell in the background, that's my front door. So as you do. So there we've got the flower and it's a beautiful flower, but obviously we want that to pop a little more. So let's get another piece of card that we can stamp the flower head on. Now I've done no prep, so that's fine. I didn't want to do any prep so that you could see that I was just going with the flow. So I'm now going to add a bit more of this orange. And the reason I'm adding it to, I could just brayer it on, but the reason I'm adding it to the cut and dry foam is you just get a light layer of paint. You don't get any thick layers. You get a thicker layer of paint when you're brayering. If you're using your cut and dry foam, you tend to press on a little bit further, a little bit firmer, and therefore your colours are, are more spread out. So that's why I'm using the cut and dry foam. And I'm doing it as if I'm crayoning. I know that sounds ridiculous, but as if I was using pencil crayons, I'm layering one colour over the other, like you would if you were using pencil crayons you're blending the color and you're adding depth of color so I'm going red orange red orange just so it gives me a depth of color and then what I'm going to do is apply some of the yellow I always love yellow because if you add the yellow it gives some vibrancy to your design and what you can do is you can blend it if you want and it'll just give some vibrancy to that design and what you can do is you can go back with some of the orange See if there's any orange on that cut and dry foam, which there is, and then a tiny touch of the red. And what I get is I get a beautifully blended colour to stamp my flower on. But I haven't actually got to crayon like I would with pencil crayons, where you spend hours layering colour lightly because you start lightly with the pencil crayons. This way, I get a blended colour and it doesn't take me too long because at the moment I am, under, I am under time constraints because I want to get these shelves sorted for my craft room, which I keep putting off because we keep changing our mind where they're going because we're good like that, me and Ian. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this now onto my painted backdrop. Now, what you have to remember is when you're using acrylic paints, they're like a plastic layer. So you just need to make sure that you allow those inks to sit that ink, that Versafine ink to sit on your acrylic paints, just so you get a good, clean, crisp image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that again, just so that I've got double the image. And I haven't done any prep, so we're actually going to cut out live on the video. There just wasn't time to do any prep. But I thought while I'm creating a card, a last minute card, why not do a video at the same time and then maybe you'll want to have a go at it as well. A nice simple card that's still effective. So I'm just blotting that ink. And if you look, because it's on acrylic paint, can you see how much ink that you remove from that painted, that, that inked layer? So give that a dry as well. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't like using your heat tool, then you just keep blotting the ink. Or you could actually emboss the image with clear embossing powder and then you won't get any smudges. I don't want clear embossing powder because I don't want a glossy light finish. That's just a personal thing, but I just don't want a glossy light finish. And as you can see, I've dried it. It's the, the paint, the ink layer is now definitely drier. 
but I, I definitely give it a good blotting because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the image. So, which it doesn't make entertaining video, I know, when you're cutting out imagery. But sometimes it's nice to see a video start to finish when somebody's creating off the cuff, when no prep has been done. It's just nice to see that. So while I'm just cutting this out, I'll just ask if you're all, I hope you're all well and I hope you're all keeping safe and that you're enjoying a little bit more freedom. I know some of you are still in lockdown, so I hope everybody's okay. So we're just cutting this out and it might not show on camera, but there is a lovely blended look to the flower. And what you could do, you could add some more pencil, pencil layering with your pencil crayons or you could use your gel pens and add some more of a colour. I'm just wondering, I don't know whether I've got any gel pens, but it would be nice to, oops, it'd be nice to layer some colour with some gel pens as well because it would just give it even more vibrancy. So I'm just going to cut that out and when we've cut that one out, I'm just going to have a look to see if we've got any gel pens. Just have a look to see if we've got any. And you know, I think we have. Well, I've got some gel pens. I've pulled them all out and they're all in a mess. But we have got some gel pens. So as you can see here, I've got some gel pens in orange, red and yellow, which is quite nice. So we'll actually use them. Why not use them when we can? And this is often why you do prep. Sometimes you do prep because you haven't then got the pauses within the videos. But I wanted to do something real time. Sometimes it's nice to show the real me and how sometimes how I create. And it's not always prepped within an inch of its life. Sometimes, like you, I go with the flow. So I'm just cutting these flowers out. Nice, easy flower to cut out, which I know some of you will be really pleased about. I know some of you don't like fussy cutting. I love fussy cutting. I find it very therapeutic, especially if I haven't got to rush the cutting out. I often do this in front of the TV or something like that. I do find it really therapeutic. So I'm just only going to cut two out, you'll be pleased to know. Just two of these flower heads, because I always think these flower heads look a little bit better with some dimension. So we've got a beautiful blend of colour here and what we can do is we can add a little bit more colour to our flower. These are just gel pens, just normal gel pens, jelly roll pens or whatever you call them, just jelly roll pens and you can actually smudge them with your finger which I absolutely love. I love smudging with my finger. I can add a little bit of yellow just a little bit of yellow to the, the top half and you can smudge that with your finger just to give a little bit of lightness to the design. So you can just add a little bit of yellow just to give it a bit of pop of colour and then I've got some touch of red here just to add a little bit of darkness and this one's actually a glittery one so this will add just a touch of glitter and what I love about them is you can just smudge that colour a little bit and we've actually I've actually got a pink one here as well so we'll just add a touch of pink just to that just to make it really pop really give it a vibrant a vibrant touch oh yes the pink definitely brings it more to life just makes it pop a little bit more so just blend that yellow a little bit there we go. And it just makes everything pop. The, the gel pens just make everything pop. So if I just lift that up so you can see. Bring it into camera, Tracy, just so you can see the pop of colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my card. I'm going to bring in this card and just think about where we're going. So we've got this flower, which we're going to give some life. Just colour some of the edges at the back 
just so you don't see all that white, just colour it a little bit. It just tones down the white background. And then we can add this to our top. So just reaching for my glue. So we're just to do this. And we've got a few more things we can do yet to our design. Just to do this. Of course, my glue, which I tested before I went live, decides it doesn't want to work. So we just add this here, like so. And then I've got the other flower, which has got more colour on. Again, just colour that white on the back just so it's not quite as obvious. So we can just add this here. Let me just get my scissors, just because so I can hold that petal in place. Just hold that petal in place like so. There we go. There's just a lot more vibrancy to that flower. And I'm just going to reach, let me just see if I can find the Distress Oxide colour that I really want. So we can get Candied Apple Distress Oxide Ink and we can just take, let's just get a scrap of paper, scrap of paper just to make sure there's nothing on here and then we can just ink the splattered numbers with the Distress Oxide Ink and the, stre the Distress Oxide Ink is candied apple. I'm just going to add a little bit more number here, just a little bit, just to give that pop of red, like so. Just to, it just gives it a pop of red. So I want to give it some balance. So I'm going to add a few more numbers in the other corner, just to give it a pop of colour, and it just brings in that red as well. Yeah, just just makes it flow. It flows sort of here like this. And then what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to add some book pages. So I'm just reaching in my cupboard, as you do, just reaching in my cupboard just to get some vintage Ready Reckoner. Because I know some of you have bought Ready Reckoner pages. So it's just nice to to use that Ready Reckoner page if we if we want, just to add a little bit of touch a book page just down the stem like so i'm just going to add a couple of pieces of book page let me just think because i have got one of these as well these little draw pulls and i think these draw pulls are such fun they're such fun it just gives another dimension to your card so yes we'll add a little bit of book page just down the side of the stem and you, you could use your matte medium if you wanted. I'm just fiddling with a little bit of PVA glue. And I'm just going to add that down my stem. And I'm going to add another piece as well because this is going to go here. You see, I love the little bit of book page. The little bit of book page just brings it to life. And I'm just going to... And because this is a card from my sister-in-law, I do want to think about it a little bit but I wanted to do it live, so I don't want to rush the card. I want to make sure that I do a really good, you know, that it looks like I've thought about the design. So I'm just going to add a little bit of book page there, which I absolutely love. The reason I'm just going to add the white splatters now is I just want to see what it looks like with a pop of white, just on those stems, that's it, on those petals even just to give it a pop of white, which I absolutely love. And then what I'm going to do, let's move these all out of the way. Let's just move these out of the way, just so that we can see what we're doing. So we're going to have this here, like so. And I'm just wondering whether to get me A4 stamp set out and just stamp a word. What words have we got on here? Create your own magic, wishing you a happy everything. I think I'm going to get my A4 stamp set. So while you're just pausing there, I'm just reaching for my A4 stamp set. And I'm hoping that I've got a piece of tissue just, just handy. Yes, we have. Nothing like a live demo, as in literally live. 
but not live if you know what I mean. I'm literally going with the flow. So I'm just going to use my A4 stamp set and I want to use this wording. So I'm just taking this out. Again, chucking everything on the floor like I normally do because it's nothing new for me. We always chuck everything on the floor just so that I can go with the flow. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of tissue and we've got garden. And I've got this little bit of tissue here. So I'm just going to rip a little bit off. You don't need to see me do that on camera. I'm just going to tear it. Just so that we've got a little piece. There we go. You can see we've got a little piece of tissue. Everything dumped on the floor because it just looks like a bomb's landed here. It looks like, you know, I've just an explosion of craft everywhere. So we're going to have the word garden. I'm not even going to use an acrylic block. I'm just going to use it as is. Let's just move these out the way so you can see what I'm doing. Just going to stamp garden on my tissue paper. And I'm just going to use as is. There we go. Perfect. So... I'm now going to just tear around this just so that it gives me a random a random feel. Obviously, I don't want it to be too big because it's got to go on the draw pull. So I'm just tearing around like so. Let's get our draw pull. Let me see how it fits on. We can make that fit on. So what I'm going to do now is get some distress collage medium and I'll just use my finger and what you do is you apply the distress collage medium to your substrate like so and then take your tissue and just place it on and it eventually will become transparent the actual tissue will become transparent Obviously, that's when it's dry, not while you're live, but it will dry and it becomes more transparent. So then it just looks like you've stamped the word onto the draw pull, like so. And what you can do is if you've got, if you've got a little bit too much tissue, you can just wipe that, like that, and then you've got the word garden. Let me just get something to wipe my hands. And then we can just dry that. Oops. We can just dry that with the heat tool. Because it then just gives that weird garden on there. And I think it's okay to dry the Distress Collage Medium. I'm sure it is. Let's just move that tissue out of the way. I think we can just dry that. At least dry the thickness of it. And it just makes it appear more transparent. Just press that down. Just pressing this down because it's not actually pressed down. There we go. Just move that excess tissue. I can't have extra tissue that I don't need. There we go. So we've got this word garden here, which I'm going to add. Oh, yes, I love that. I love that little little plate there and now what I've got I've, mu I've now moved my drawers around so do I know where anything is do I yeah, know where anything is so we've moved the drawers around and what we've got here is just to finish this off a little bit we've got these little screw heads these little screw heads that I can add of course when you're live it's very difficult to pick them up or to find exactly the right one that you want of course it is so we'll use those two put those back I can hardly pick them up so I'm now going to add these just here like so it does help if you stick this down first so just stick your drawer pull down first just so that that's stuck on the card and you will have to wait a good 20 minutes for that to stick down properly. And what you do is you stick your little screw head there. The screw heads just finish it off, I think. They just give it a nice little finish. So just add a little bit more glue here. Just finishes it off nicely. 
just add that there of course i can't i can't put it on because it sticks to my finger because i've got all the glue you can think of on my sticky fingers so we've got a garden on here and then what i'm thinking is I don't want to put any moss in this time. I just like it as it is. I don't want to put any moss in. So I'm just going to go back to the stamp sets, she says. Not that there's much room on here, but let me just go back to the stamp set. So we've got this stamp set. And on here, it says, seeing as how it's a birthday, wishing you happy everything seems rather appropriate to me for a birthday. Wishing you happy everything. You don't just have to say happy birthday all the time you can say some different things as well so wishing you half happy everything just seems so appropriate so i'm just going to reach for a piece of card so we're reaching for a piece of card i just think happy everything is really appropriate so bring this in let's get that the right way there we go just stick that on my acrylic block and it slightly goes up the word everything does it's not in a straight line just so that you're aware of that so wishing you happy everything so i'm then going to add this like so and just as i concentrate i go a little bit quiet just while i concentrate on that sentiment and sometimes it's nice just to do a video and just go with the flow of creating a card. And this would be a nice simple one for you to create, create for a family member or a friend, or just to send to somebody to say that you're thinking about them. So wishing you happy everything. And I'm actually going to kneel on the floor because it's so professional. And I'm actually going to cut that out with my cutter just because it just make, gives me a nice, straight tidy edge that's all i want so i've literally leaned on the floor just to cut that just so that it looks nice and tidy and what you can do is you can see if there's any of your paint left on your cut and dry foam if there isn't then just use your distress oxide i always check first to see if there's any of that paint left just so that i don't waste it you may as well use it if it's still you know wet on the cut and dry foam but all we've used is a bit of paint a bit of cut and dry foam some inks and your stamps now i'm not cutting this at the moment because i'm just trying to decide where i'm going because this is going to be i might do i want it raised like that is it do you ever talk to yourself because i do i think i'm going to raise it like that so what we want is to cut it about there I hope you talk to yourself as well like I do because I talk to myself all the time. So I've got an excuse when I'm doing a video for YouTube. It's all right if I speak to myself. It's not the first sign of madness. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. If you can hear the birds singing, that's because we've got the window open because it's actually very warm here in Cheshire. I don't know whether it's warm where you are, but it's boiling here. So I'm just going to add this like so just hold it in place whoops you do have to hold it don't worry about your glue initially you do have to hold it in place just while it takes hold and then you can wipe away any excess glue afterwards so just hold it in place before you remove any excess glue like so i'm all about making sure you've got a nice tidy and keep wiping your hands when you're using a white card just keep wiping your hands just to keep them nice and and clean so just add that there because i will place this into a box i'm going to add this card into a box now my lovely friend Ginny twin sent me some lovely rusty paper clips i'm just wondering whether i'm able to use one of those or whether it'll have to be one of my smaller ones. It may have to be one of my smaller ones. I'm just going to use a smaller one. Just for this project, I'd just like to test first to see if I'm happy. Yes, the little paper clips can go here. 
So just add a little paper clip. So this is just a mini one. And I just add a little bit of adhesive to that. Do I want one the other side? So when I'm planning a project, I, I always talk to myself and then decide whether I want. No, I think I just want. Do I want one just one side? Let me just check. You can have one either side if you want. I don't want one either side. Can't make my mind up now. No, I think I'm going to go for one. The reason being you've got one, two, three, and it's sort of a blend. It sort of moves around like this, so I quite like that. So I don't want to do that initially. And do I want to add... You see, I like this rusty paper clip that Ginny sent me. But I don't know whether Jackie, my friend, would my sister-in-law, would, would totally understand my paper clip fetish. So we'll leave that off. And I'm just going to add a little bit more book page. Just a little touch more. I do have to think about the recipient sometimes, just to just so that the recipient, you know, understands what you're sending them and appreciates what you're sending them. You know, there might be some things the recipient doesn't like that you absolutely love. So I'm just thinking about the recipient. So this is my card so far. I've now lost my paper clip. How can you put a paper clip down and then lose it three and a half seconds later? Oh, well, I have. I've lost the paper clip. So we're just going to do that now. Perhaps I've just chucked it on the floor. This is what I'm like. You could add the paper clip over the top. There it is. So I could add the paper clip over the numbers like so. And you know, I am going to do that because I just like that. I like that little quirky touch. And she knows I'm a little bit quirky. She knows I love those little quirky touches. And that I like to add little different things. Let me show you what it looks like when you add it to a black mat. Everything always pops when you add it to a black mat. So if I add this here like so. Can you see? That adds just the perfect touch. Just to finish it off. Let me just bring that in so you can see it a little bit more. When you add it to the black mat. It really does make everything pop. And you've got that garden text on there so i just love that i think i'm going to add a few more white splatters this is how you can always tell whether something is finished or not so in a few white more more white splatters just to that's better just a couple on that little pot just so it looks like it belongs in that little pot and it just looks better so and do i want anything else i'm just umming and ah in now where I'm just going to put a little heart, like so, just to finish that off. Put it back on the black mat. Let's put it back on the black mat, because I can give this time to dry. Place that on the black mat, and there we go. There's our little card finished. An off-the-cuff video. I hope you enjoyed that and it's just showcasing one of the older stamp sets as well which I absolutely adore this is one of my most used flower sets but I just thought it'd be nice to showcase that I hope you all have a lovely day a lovely evening and I'll see you soon bye